from around the globe. It's the Cube with coverage of SUSECON Digital. Brought to you by SUSE. Welcome back. I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the Cube's coverage of SUSECON Digital 20. Really excited to be digging into some of the cloud discussions. I've got two guests joining me now, uh, one from across the pond and one from across the country. So uh, joining me is Julie Baldwin. She is the Senior Director of Global CSP Alliance Sales with SUSE. Coming from across the pond and coming from uh, California is Mikhail Prudnikov, who is a Principal Business Development at Amazon Web Services. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you, Stu. Really, really Thanks excited about being here. All right, so, so Julie, obviously, you know, we know uh, where, where Linux has been proliferating the cloud, uh, something that you know, most people, I think, really understand, uh, you know, cloud, uh, you know, big piece of the overall SUSE discussion. Um, bring us inside a little bit, you know, your role, and of course, the long partnership that SUSE has had with uh, AWS. Yeah, so, so, so my role is working with, you know, the major hyperscalers and the public cloud providers in, you know, offering solutions that's driving digital transformation and this modernization. Uh, even more so in today's, you know, current climate, um, we're seeing, you know, modernization transformation is being driven out of necessity, uh, necessity now due to the, you know, the, the COVID-19 impact. So um, I really want to draw on, you know, uh, we've been working with AWS for the last 10 years. Um, and we've serviced, you know, thousands of customers between us who are, are looking at how they innovate um, and drive, you know, uh, flexibility and agility into, into their, you know, their IT and their, and their um, accounts. So it's really important that, um, you know, we, we look at how we support our customers from a, uh, an integrated support perspective and how we can, you know, we can move them forward in the, in the digital transformation journeys. Awesome, so uh, yeah, M Mikhail, when I, when I hear what Julie's talking about, uh, I think about when I, when I look at AWS, you, you talk about builders uh, when you go to the, uh, the, the, the conference that Amazon hold, uh, you know, innovation uh, is absolutely something there. So talk to us a little bit about how uh, you know, the Linux community in, in, in general and SUSE customers specifically uh, are, are engaged and, uh, you know, a piece of uh, what AWS is doing. Sure. So at, uh, in my role at AWS, uh, I'm responsible for making sure that our customers are successful as they go through their cloud transformation journey or business transformation journey. So those, those are all involved transformations and um, it's, it's actually, an interesting position to be in because you see it firsthand on the ground for all the challenges and all the all the interesting problems that customers get to solve. And then it's 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 actually incredibly exciting that uh, we're having this conversation in the in the framework of SUSECON because open source is incredibly important uh, for for AWS and AWS. We understand uh, how important open source is for customer success. And therefore, we've been involved um, and contributed to the projects from, from very early on, such as Linux and, and KVM and Java and Kubernetes. So we see, we see a, lot of, a lot of proliferation in the space. And then another, another interesting, um, I guess, parallel that I would say is if you think about the open source notion, which is largely around community. So there is this sort of like juxtaposition of the cathedral and the bazaar. Right, and then so the bazaar is the vibrant community of people coming with with ideas, and they're, they're pursuing them and they're innovating. So something similar we see in the um, I guess AWS community with several million customers day to day, they're solving challenges and bringing uh, lots of lots of requests for innovation. And, and I, I won't I won't call it put pressure on Amazon to to innovate, but it's it's a lot of inspiration, right? And then therefore. Uh, it's 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 interesting to see, right? That um, because of all that innovation and all those requests, uh, customers get access on Amazon to to all the features, such as same as open source, right? So you capitalize on this on this innovation, and here here as well, customers have requests, let's say uh, in financial service industry, and then so you you get uh, all the security features, all the all the controls. Let's say like ISO, SOC, uh, SOC compliance, and then uh, some of the most stringent compliance 
uh, already like productized at, at AWS. That's that, that's one of the example. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I, it, 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 I was just sorry, sorry, Julius. That that customer flywheel that you talk about is what we've really watched. Uh, there, sorry, Julie, you, you wanted to comment on what he was saying. Yeah, I, I, I was just kind of like, just to kind of like reinforce, you know, the, that whole community and that whole innovation piece as well, because, um, you know, from an open source perspective, it, you know, that, that sense of community is um, really driving those changes. Um, and with the AWS platform, it's got a very rich, you know, functionality behind it. You know, it's one of the, you know, the, the first cloud platform. So it does have that, that pedigree of innovation, you know, from, from day one. Um, and that's just being driven by the, you know, by, by our customers who are pushing the envelope saying, we, you know, we want more. Um, and that's where, you know, the, the, the relationship between, you know, SUSE and, and AWS has really, you know, really started to excel looking at how we, you know, we move into that container space now as well. And, and help the customers, you know, modernize not only their, you know, their, their cloud native apps, you know, going straight to cloud, but how do they modernize their, their legacy applications as well? Um, and how do they, you know, take, you know, you know, take their on-premise, you know, um, environments and, and make them more effective and more efficient and by using public cloud to be able to do that. Yeah, Julie, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because absolutely there's opportunity, but there, there's challenges there. Customers really have, you know, it's either hybrid or multi-cloud deployment, uh, you know, containerization, Kubernetes are absolutely enablers there. Uh, but, you know, I wonder if you can bring us inside, you know, what, what's Suse doing? Do you have any customer examples of, uh, you know, how they're really making this change? We know that uh, it is still, the majority of applications have not been modernized. They've not gone cloud native. Uh, they're not ready for these environments. So how, how are customers working through uh, this ultimate journey? Yeah, I mean, it's really, really complex. And I, and I did a presentation at our sales summit talking about, um, you know, Gartner's five R's, about, you know, what applications can move to the cloud, how easy it is to do that. And I think there was some research done last year with 451 um, where the previous year there was a lot of customers said, yeah, we're moving to cloud and it's easy. And then this year when they reran the survey, it was, no, it's really hard. We need partners. We need to look at how we, how we do this. And so um, not every application is going to be able to be moved to the cloud. And it's really important that the, you know, the customers have a strategy and look at what they're doing on premise and then start to identify what is, you know, what is cloud friendly. What do they need to do to kind of like go forward? You know, do they need to, you know, completely um, you know, rewrite an application, do they need to refactor it? Um, can it just be a lift and shift? And so what we're doing with, with AWS is, you know, we've been working with some of the partners like Wipro, for example, who um, have built out a retail application um, platform to be able to migrate those customers um, quickly um, into um, a more cost-effective and efficient way of delivering businesses because they're obviously you know, even more so in the in the current scenario, their you know their their margins are being squeezed. They need to be look at being able to to deliver higher you know um, returns of investment and TCO with any of their you know in the, with their spend. So you know that's that's one area that we are kind of like look you know looking at as well. And we've had some great success with it. Um, we've also got um, you know quick start programs with with AWS that allows you know customers who need to migrate quickly and easily to be able to you know to take those applications um, and their environments and and move them onto the public cloud so that's a that th those are two key areas that we're really looking at um, you know driving you know driving forward because it's critical because it is complex um, you need to have a roadmap, you need to have a strategy about how you do it, and you need to identify and include the stakeholders um, when they move, you know, when you're changing your environment to make sure that you haven't missed anything. Uh, so, Mikael, would, would love to hear your viewpoint on this too. Uh, you know, we, when you look at the Amazon ecosystem, uh, you've got a huge uh, AWS marketplace. Uh, obviously, the, the systems integrators uh, help customers work through their various environments and, and how to modernize them, how to move there. Uh, you know, what, what are you seeing in the SUSE customer base? Any customer examples you can help share as to how they're moving along in this journey? Sure. 
one one of the we, we have to understand right a little bit uh, of the context so all this all this talk about let's say cloud migration and innovation it's not it's not an abstract uh, sort of exercise an abstract discipline it, it it happens for a reason right if we look if you look at the innovative companies at at fast moving companies effectively they um they see on average time to value uh metric uh about 440 times faster than let's say what we call uh, like slow companies right and then so that's that that puts a lot of pressure on companies to to actually uh, embrace embrace this uh, innovation and digital transformation and engage with customers uh, in, in in a way that they, they have never done before such as it, it just technology enables so many things so many opportunities right and then with with any opportunity it comes uh, here comes the challenge and and then as julie pointed out it's a it's a difficult exercise let's let's not mince words here so mm -hmm. and therefore uh we have to make sure that everybody is aligned let's say customer goes through this exercise right they, they're trying to uh change their processes the leadership sets new goals the leadership sets new objectives they they have to change the culture they have to train people um so that is that is that is the the challenge that they're facing right there within the company. Then outside of the company, you want to make sure that effectively everybody everybody comes to the table with uh, with a lot of value and very much aligned. And that is that is where uh, we see, I guess, a lot of um, a lot of opportunity, because as as you go through this process. Um, you have to write. Uh, you have to have the right stakeholders. You have you have to have trained people, right? And then if if you look at uh, another statistic, such as 80, 86 companies or so, they they have cloud first strategy, and yet eighty six infrastructure spend is still on premise. And the reason for that is companies cannot cannot hire and train train fast enough, right? So therefore, on AWS side, we uh, we invest a lot in uh, training programs and in certification programs. As well as we have the the vibrant community of partners who can who can step in and help us with challenges such as we have a, a system of uh, GSIs and SIs, so we have like thousands of SIs, MSPs. We have we have providers, and then effectively, effectively, what 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 results here is that uh, you 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 have the synergy. Not not only the change going from from the inside company, also have the support structure as Julia talked about quick starts. We we have training and then we have programmatic support, right? How to how to navigate customers through that, and then as they switch to Lin to match their 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 new processes, this this is where the the power of the cloud comes in and power the, of the community. So all those challenges they have been solved. So you can take some of the blueprints and apply them as is, and you can you can pick and choose what what you apply. So for example, you can go uh, with cloud native tools with with Amazon Web Services. At the very same time, you can you can also pick products. For example, uh, SUSE Cloud Application Platform, which provides you uh, this. I, I would call it um, a slightly more opinionated approach how to how to implement your DevOps practices and agile practices. And then it still natively runs on top of uh, Amazon uh, Elastic Container Service. So yeah, and then as as Julie mentioned, we pro we pro, for example had had a lot of success with it. Hmm. And just touching on that point, Mikhail, you know, we talk about um, we're, we're not islands, you know, we have to engage with the partners, you know, we want to make sure that, our, you know, the customer success is at the heart of everything that we do. Um, and we have to bring in the right skill sets at the right time, you know, to, to make, you know, make that journey as easy as possible and as quickly as possible. Um, and so that's the, you know, that, that's the beauty of, of community. Um, that's the beauty of partners um, and, and vendors coming together with the customer at the heart of, uh, of, of everything that they do. And, you know, I know that's a very strong message that you're, you, you're going to get from, you know, from SusieCon, um, but it's also a strong message that we share with AWS as well about how do we do the right thing for the customer and how do we, you know, and how do we enable that success for them to be successful, which will drive, you know, ultimately, you know, success as, as partners as well. Excellent. Yeah, Julie, one of the big things we, themes we heard in the keynote was talking about the developer communities. Obviously, SUSE and AWS have a lot of developers. Uh, any, anything specific for, for the developers out there that, that uh, either want to highlight? 
Um, so obviously we've got the cloud application platform um, and we've got the quick starts as well. So um, for me, it is, you know, you've got a, a proven um, a proven platform with, you know, with AWS, the, you know, the infrastructure available there. The, the ease of which, you know, cloud application platform can sit, you know, on top of that, uh, of, of the EKS, the Elastic uh, Compute Services, is really, really, um, you know, kind of like critical. And, you know, for me, it would be just, you know, just try it um, and give us your feedback as well. I think that's really important because the way that, you know, we drive innovation is through that the, the you know the cut the feedback from our customers and and people actually using the you know the services and I think Mikhail uh, pointed to that earlier as well that you know the innovation that they've seen has been driven by you know customers actually saying we want this feature or we want this function and from a from a DevOps community is you know there are alternatives um, out there and you know you should you know should try you, know, you should try and look at you know if that suits your needs better. Um, and look at how you can, you know, you can use a trusted partner like AWS and, and SUSE to, to actually, you know, meet some of those, you know, new needs that are coming aboard. And it's also, uh, to, to Julie's point, right, it, it, we, we cannot overemphasize the importance of, of builders, uh, of people who own own this innovation within the company. And uh, the, the, biggest, the biggest thing that uh, companies can do for their success is to enable builders. And as, as we mentioned before, right? So the, the process is, is challenging. Uh, there, are, there are multiple parties involved, but at the very same time, you empower people to, to drive this change. It's almost like instead of directing them like, like oh, um, there's, there's this uh, pretty, pretty interesting analogy. So instead of, uh, if, if you want uh, people to to know how to build a ship, so you do not you do not tell them like, oh, go gather wood, and then like uh, this is how you hammer things together. Uh, you just you just make sure that they they yearn for the sea, and then ultimately this is this is what drives the innovation. And here we we have essentially with with uh, for example Suza Cap, you already can enable people, and they can they can uh, practice the DevOps, they can practice Agile, and essentially align this with this. Uh, fast time to value uh, practices, right? So that that is the tooling, and then you take quick starts, and then you put literally innovation uh, into into those people's hands. Uh, for example, Susa, Susa Cap Quick Start allows you to to bring up the the whole environment in, in pretty much like minutes. Or let's say if you want to to innovate on SAP systems, again you you take Quick Start, and then well SAP takes takes a little bit uh, more, more involved. So maybe like like in in an hour and a half you you have SAP environment and then you can you can essentially start innovating there, and yeah. Excellent. Well, Mikhail and Julie, thank you so much for the updates. You know, love hearing about you know, innovation. How companies absolutely building is uh, what what differentiates uh, is the companies that are ready uh, for today's modern era. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Stu. Thank you. Thank Mikhail. you. Thank you, Stu. Thank you, Julie. All right, we'll be back with lots more coverage from SUSECon Digital 20. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.